Hello there internet, Darwin here, back again with another video. Today I'm going to be making a response. We got French toast sticks. Just some guy just uploaded a video about the new Kenobi show. I like his content, I agree with a lot of it, but I saw this one and uh, it is like one of the I don't know, biggest forms of cap I have ever seen. And I am going to talk about it, and I'm going to talk about why I v highly disagree. And, like, also, I, I can tell by the dislike ratio that almost everybody disagrees as well. Even, even in the comments. It's like, yeah, people are flaming him a bit. Now, well, alright, I'm good. I like the guy. I like his content. Just this one video. So far that I know of that I have an issue with. So. We're going to be getting into it. Basically. New Kenobi show came out. Kenobi is a troubled man. And. It's showing him very troubled. And this guy. He's just like. He, he's just, he, he's, he's surprised. Like, he's like, this shouldn't be this way when clearly if you put two and two together, it should. And, you know, I'm just talking, but like, I'll explain in a second. Uh, to some guy, if you somehow come across this video, I highly doubt it, but just know I'm not like taking a dump on you or whatever. I'm not, I'm not like hating. I'm just... Criticizing your opinions with my own opinions and also facts. Okay, let's let's get into the video because I'm stupid. So the first clip is already like a big whoopsie because you know. Well, we'll show you. I'll show you. I've been waiting for you, Obi Wan. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. I've been waiting for you. The circle is now complete. We meet again at last. I've been waiting, waiting for you, Obi-Wan. Now the circle is now Already, it's, uh, it's very, you know, disingenuous. It's very misleading because, you know, That is very obviously not what the context is. That's not. That's not what that is. That's not what he was referring to. It's the third episode of the show. That is Obi Wan's first encounter. First encounter with Vader. And he he's spinning it around to be, oh, that's their big fight. That's. That's where in uh, A New Hope, that's that's what he's referring to when Obi-Wan schooled Darth Vader when, like, I, I don't, th I hope he's, like, being, like, sarcastic and, like, not serious because that's very clearly what he's not referring to. There's obviously going to be a big fight at the end. There always is. But yeah, let's get into it more. Well, that didn't take long. I said Dizzy would find a way to ruin the Kenobi series, and they did it in record time. How? By making Obi-Wan Kenobi a coward. Already. Incorrect. Well, kind of. It's complicated, because, you know, the man has severe PTSD and trauma. And, like, all of these fears and, like, forms of grief and regret and stuff, you know, it, it, it all, like, accumulates into this big mesh of, like, it, it affects you, especially, like, after 10 years of dealing with it, you know, you know, your brain's still being stuck on such a 
horrible event in your life like you know that that affects you now again gonna be going in depth with this later because i'm just saying stating the case i will explain but yeah let's just continue not afraid not rusty a coward just look at this treated disrespected totally bitched how did we get here Let's start from the beginning. The episode picks up with Obi-Wan and Leia on the cargo freighter. Obi's tried to communicate with Qui-Gon Jinn. Remember how at the end of episode 3, Yoda told Obi that he'd teach him how to speak with Qui-Gon through the Force? Well, apparently Obi either never managed to do it, sucked at it, or Qui-Gon Jinn doesn't accept collect calls, because he never answers. 1. He has cut himself off from the Force for 10 years two he is just now reconnecting to the force now i'm pretty sure regular like people who have cut themselves from the force or people who are just not force sensitive are not able to you know see force ghosts i will i will actually look this up real quick okay force ghosts can only appear to force users just googled it and now obi-wan yeah he's a force user but he cut himself off now i don't know about you but and it seems kind of telling like show don't tell they don't need to hold your hand to tell you this i'm going to skip two points that uh are relevant to what i want to speak about i'm not gonna like go through the whole video that's just a waste of time for me but yeah this is probably a play on leia being the 10 year old kid but she can't both be mature for her age and totally innocent as obi and leia walk obi catches a vision of anakin wrapped in his jedi robes totally throwing obi off that's a great moment you know what would have been better if Obi had started having visions of Anakin on Tatooine, and then had the scene of Reba telling him that Vader still lives. Now, that could work, but it's context. It's for context. He has been spending 10 years trying to forget it. Trying to forget Anakin. You know, and then... Poof. He finds he he finds out that Anakin is still alive after what happened to him, what he did to him. And of course that would kind of trigger his anxiety because you know his past is catching up to him. You know, oh, what what's what's what does what's Anakin what does he even look like? What what's he going to do to him? When Anakin shows up, what's gonna happen? It's only a matter of time. Now, of, of course, I mean, you could be like, oh, it's his ghost haunting him. Unlike before finding out. Like, but they're trying to show him starting to get past the point. And then the past coming back. It's not just him constantly living in the past. It, you're like being haunted by it 24-7. Uh, at least that's that's kind of what I make from it, if that makes sense. Then it goes to Reva arriving at the Inquisitor's headquarters, and she has to walk 400 miles to get into this thing. She has to go through this, and this, and this, just to get to the Inquisitor room. Why? It's not dramatic, it's just silly. Well, I mean, this is just a nitpick. Like, there's there's no actual criticism here. That's just a nitpick. One, it's a freaking highly secure ocean freaking monument building. It, it, they're gonna have like the big boss room isn't just just gonna be the main like center of it all. It's gonna be deep. This is underwater. Th this is the place at the end of Jedi Fallen Order you go to, where you go underwater, and then you find Vader, you fight the, you fight Trilla, and then Vader pops up, this is that. This is that place. 
by her daughter and farmers from Tull ever since he rescued her. And the moment he's actually pressed, he slips. Sure, when people don't do something for a while, they get rusty. But this seems forced. And it was. Obi plays off the name mix-up as him confusing Luma for her mother, who'd recently died. This was all to have a reason for Obi to say that Leia reminds him of her real mother, Tadamame or Panda Bear or whatever the fuck her name was. The troopers buy this and go about their business. Now again, this seems really just like a nitpick, like you want to complain about something. You're like trying to find something minor and like spinning it as something big. I don't know, that's, that's kind of what I get from this. Like there's not much to complain about, man. He just, you know, getting old, getting frail. His mind isn't what it used to be. And he's kind of, you know, mentally out of it, considered everything that's just happened. And, you know, it kind of, you know, makes your decisions, uh, your, your cognitive abilities not really that pristine. Once they leave, Leia confronts Obi about knowing her real mother, and then flat out asks him if he's her real father, which he denies. That's got to be a nod to the fan theory that Obi and Padme were having an affair. If it's not, it's miraculous that the writers would stumble onto that. Leia also confronts Obi about constantly lying to her, which is interesting that she catches this at 10 years old, but 9 years later, a then 19 year old Luke never notices. It also sets up a difference for the reason why Obi lies to the twins. He lies to Leia to protect her, while he lies to Luke to manipulate him into becoming a weapon to kill Vader. Another reason is probably unintentional, but the scene also sets up why Obi will use Luke against Vader instead of Leia. He knows- Well, that's a, that's that's a little disingenuous. That's not really- That's not really what happened. It, it wasn't- Obi, it, it wasn't Obi-Wan, like, manipulated Luke to, like- kill his dad no that's not that's not the story man that's 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 not how it it's not how it goes they think luke is the chosen one because anakin failed he they assumed that he wasn't the chosen one and that luke is the chosen one the prophecy spoke of i assume that leia up to that point Hadn't sh hasn't shown signs of the Force. Because they really only explore that around Return of the Jedi. And so, why would, why would Obi-Wan go to the Senator Girl to stop Darth Vader when he can go to the son of Anakin Skywalker... Who he thinks is the chosen one, and you know, try to train him to become a powerful Jedi, so he can, you know, stop it. Cause no one else was gonna do it. Why not have the most powerful Force user in existence have have his son train his son to? Stop the big bad guy for the greater good. When you can't do it, you're an old man. No one else is going to do it. Against it. She shows them a secret tunnel that they can use to get to the escape ship. But then Obi feels a presence. He runs to the door and looks outside and somehow, in the span of minutes, is gone from the middle of the day to the dead of night. Why? Because Vader has Why? Because it's Star Wars and it's an alien planet? And who knows how time works there. You know, it could just easily be that time is very strange, you know. Days could be minutes, nights could be hours, you don't know. It's just, it's fiction. Yeah. On from the middle of the day to the dead of night. Why? Because Vader has arrived. Apparently he brought the night with him too. Now, everyone is scared shitless. The troopers, the inquisitors, and the people in the town. And that last part is really important because they would have no reason to be afraid of Vader unless they knew who he was and what he does. Mapuzo isn't exactly a tourist destination, 
So the fact that these people in the middle of nowhere know about Vader pretty much destroys this idea that Obi had no idea Vader was alive. Not really. Um, one. Yeah, have you been paying attention? This planet was a mining facility. Like, the empires basically drained the planet of everything. Um, a planet that is that heavily, like, controlled by the empire is going to, you know gonna know the empire pretty well i'd assume but you know we'll get into the obi-wan thing in a second it's just not plausible one yoda calls anakin vader when he shows obi the video of anakin killing jedi so obi knows this is the same person two tatooine is well known for its scum and villainy so it's very likely people on the run from the empire might show up and have carefully edited stories to tell That's just hearsay? Ob objection, Your Honor? Lack of foundation? Like... Hold on. Obi-Wan lives in a cave way far, out way far away from civilization. He goes to a job that is very, very far from the town. It's just a... He, he, he shovels meat from a dead fish all day. That's his job. No one talks there. Like, we've seen, we've seen it. He, he goes there. He doesn't hang around. He doesn't hang around because he doesn't want to be seen. He actively avoids people. He only goes around people when he needs to. It's very plausible that he has not heard anything in 10 years. You know... You know, when you when you're avoiding something, it's very easy to not know stuff about it because you're actively avoiding it every day of your life. And that's what Obi Wan's doing. He's avoiding everything. And again, he only goes out to like go to his job or like to scrounge for food to survive. He doesn't actively hang around the townsfolk. Three Vader is murking people with the Force. He senses Obi-Wan is there and starts killing people just to fuck with Obi. He strangles a father, snaps the son's neck, and drags a screaming woman through the street. All just to get Obi to come out of hiding. Incorrect. He is trying to scare Obi-Wan. He is doing a bunch of senseless violence because that is the direct opposite of what Obi-Wan knew him to be. Obi-Wan knew him as, a, like, a master Jedi Knight who saved and helped a bunch of innocents. And Darth Vader is literally killing towns, just random townsfolk. He is not doing anything. Like, he's not trying to drag out Obi-Wan. He's so violent, even the Inquisitors are afraid. There's no way anyone's keeping this a secret. Uh, secrets, like, it's not really the fact that it's a secret or not, it's the fact that Obi-Wan, like, is actively avoiding the Empire. Like, he's actively avoiding everything surrounding the Empire. He, he you only saw him at the very edge of the town to collect his freaking sand camel and to go to work or to go back to the cave. Obi would have to know about Vader after Vader spending 10 years murdering people in public. So Obi sends Leia with Tala so he can protect her from Vader. He runs into the mining fields where Vader shows up and pops his saber. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi turns into a bitch. There's no other way to describe it. Well, that's not true. He turns into a sniveling pants wedding pussy ass bitch. He's so scared he doesn't even light the saber. He just runs. This is like one of the one of the biggest things to me. Like he just doesn't get it. Like he hasn't watched it. He hasn't paid attention to it. He's only going off by what he thinks should happen and what he wants to happen. He is not taking in what is happening. 
what is happening is Obi-Wan is face to face with everything. That is everything to that man. Obi-Wan has been on the run for 10 years hiding like suffering from like severe PTSD and trauma, grief, like all of these emotions tying to Anakin and just the rest of the Jedi. And then what do you know? He is face to face with his brother that he thought he killed. His brother who murdered a bunch of people, children, old people, freaking everyone. Killed everyone he knew and cared about. And what is his first instinct? Oh, to be like, oh, I'm a freaking, I'm gonna save the day, I'm a hero. I'm freaking Superman. No. He sees that monster. He sees the boogeyman. That is a that is the boogeyman to him. He like unrecognizable. That is not the man he knew, but he is. So his instinct is to run away. Dude, I thought you were a Jedi, not some cop from Uvalde. And he's not a Jedi anymore. He only has the lightsaber on him as like a last resort defense. It's not his main weapon. Why do you think he carries a gun? And then he appears to run back the same way he came because no one told director Dever Chow that if you cut to another shot that looks damn near identical to the first one, it'll make people think it's the same shot. Again, nitpicking. And that Obi is running back to Vader instead of from him. You don't have to reshoot it. You just have to hold in his breath. The anyway, Obi runs and Vader shows up behind him. He must have been holding his breath the whole time. And they start to fight. Now, remember how Obi was still a good shot when he got caught by the stormtroopers? Yeah, all that's gone now. Vader j Well... He hasn't been a Jedi for 10 years. You know what he has been? A freaking Desperado. A freaking Outcast. He's gonna use a gun. You know the so uncivilized thing he quoted? Yeah, he's so uncivilized now. This is his reality to, he, he's not going to out himself as a Jedi. You know, I play freaking super freaking Meat Boy. I 100% of that game. You think after 10 years of not playing it, I'm going to be good at it? No, I'm going to suck. I'm going to be horrible at it. And also, being a Jedi is also one being one with the Force. If you are not in tune with the Force, you're going to suck at being a Jedi and you're going to die. Just whoops his natural ass. Finn fought better than this. That's not to say Obi-Wan should be the monster that he was in the prequels. He can be rusty, but not a wet-ass pussy. Now, I don't think, I, I don't think you understand the scope of this. He's not just rusty. He is a frail, traumatized, PTSD-ridden old man. He like, look, look at this. Look at this. This is, this is his brother that he thought he killed. And he is back looking like a Frankenstein monster. Do you think he's going to be chill, calm, collected, and, like, know how to fight after 10 years of not doing so? After 10 years? He's just after abandoning everything he knew? Just destroyed. Thoroughly destroyed. All his skill left him because, what, he's scared of Vader? This isn't as bad as having Luke try to murder his nephew because he had a wet dream, but it's still terrible and unnecessary. We didn't need to see Obi and Vader fight, especially if it's not going to be an actual fight. The tension of them almost meeting, of Obi sensing Vader's malice, of Vader almost learning about Luke and Leia would have been enough. You don't have to do this. While all this is happening, Leia decides to send Tala. You know, again, <clears throat> again, it's it's just nitpicking. Like, yeah, you don't have to, but like, it's it's about the two. It's about both of them. Yeah, it's 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 about both Obi Wan and, and Anakin. And so, yeah, they're going to meet. They're going to have their first run-in after he finds out he's alive. And, and, like, Vader knows he's 
he's around. You know, the man, the man he's been hunting for years. Back at the quarry, Vader corners Obi, grabs him with the force, which Obi can't break free of, and then knocks down some flammable rock. Obi can't break free of because he cut himself off with the force for 10 years. That's not a small number. 10 years. He, he's, he's just now reconnecting to the force. And he is just not good. He's, he's never even really been the greatest at using the force. He was more of a swordsman. Rocks, lights them on fire with the saber, which is admittedly cool, and force pulls Obi through the fire. Hell, he might as well kill him, but that can't happen because of the lore. So no, that can't happen because Vader doesn't want to kill him. So Vader stops when he's basically won and sends troopers to get Obi so he could torture him some more later. So, to recap, Obi is scared shitless of Vader to the point he forgets how to fight. He's forgotten how to fight for 10 years. This isn't just like a new, a new occurrence. Knowing how to shoot a gun isn't the same as like using a lightsaber. Now, remember when you and everyone else were dogging on Rey for like being amazingly great with a lightsaber for picking it up for the first time? Now I know he used to be a, an amazing swordsman, but again, 10 years after not like doing anything, blocking out all of your past, running away from it, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be good. You're going to be horrible. He hasn't used the force for nearly a decade to the point he struggles to stop Leia from falling to her death. When confronted with Vader, Obi gets manhandled and dragged through fire. And this is a man who plans to train Luke Skywalker to fight Vader on his own with minimal training. I mean, at this point, yeah, that doesn't really make much sense. You took one of the dumber parts of Star Wars, this idea of waiting until Luke is grown to train him, and actually made it dumber. Impressive. Most impressive. Then Tala shows up and kills the trooper sent to get Obi from this obvious high ground position. And all of them, including Vader, look in every direction but up. Vader should be fucking paranoid about anyone having high ground. But no. No. Instead, Tala lights the rest of the rocks on fire while Vader watches the loader droid carry Obi-Wan away. How about just force pulling Tala off the cliff into the flames? Or snap in her neck? It's not like he can't sense where she is. He could see her if he just turned his head. But that makes too much sense. So he just leaves. He... Again, you're, you're seriously missing the point. He let... He let Obi-Wan go. Because he wants him to be alive. He, he doesn't want to kill him. You know what's going through this man's mind? He has been training for this moment. He's been preparing for this moment, correcting all of his errors. He has gotten rid of his cockiness. He has gotten rid of it, rid of his arrogance. He is no longer Anakin Skywalker, the man who will just run at a bad guy and then get his arm cut off. He is the man that is ready for everything. And when he has dedicated his life to completely changing who he is as a person and as a fighter, he comes across the thing he was preparing for. And it is a sad old man who is scared. He is going to be insanely furious. He is... He's like, what? I freaking, I, I, I dedicated my entire life to this. I dedicated all of my new, mis I dedicated my miserable life to facing this man to beat him. And he is a joke. Do you think he's going to kill him? No. Then what's that going to do for him? He, he wants, he, he wants a challenge. He wants to beat beat Obi-Wan. He doesn't want to just kill an old man on the freaking side of the road. He, he, no. It's not Vader. <laughs> he leaves. Vader leaves as he's winning. Oi fucking Vey. 
he left because he's winning too easily. He doesn't he doesn't want Obi-Wan to just be easy. If he wanted to kill him, he would have. But he doesn't want to kill him. It's not for the sake of plot. So, Tal is going to take Obi to Jabim to get healed. Meanwhile, Leia runs into Reva, who somehow manages to find the contact and kill him, and she chases after Leia. And that's how it ends. So it's going to be one of these shows, is it? They just couldn't help themselves. Just because Obi's broken doesn't mean he has to be incapable. It, it kind of makes sense that he's incapable, because again, I think, I think you're just overlooking everything every single aspect of the show it's it's not about a hero it's about an old man with ptsd and trauma grief everything going on like he's living with that for 10 years and he is being confronted with all of his fears in a frankenstein freaking monster coming to him you could have made this work by having Vader mess with Obi's head by showing him visions while they were fighting no that's what the fight was it was him messing with him that was him messing with him he wasn't trying to kill him he wasn't doing anything he was he was messing with him so that Obi's disoriented so now it makes sense why he can't fight back but no you just made him look like a coward no, I, I don't... Why, yes, he seems to be a coward by definition. He's in no way simply, like, just a coward. Like, again, you're not looking... You're not looking deep enough into it. You're just looking at a piece of the pie and saying, This is it? No, you, you gotta... It's, it's a lot more nuanced. On the plus side, it was nice to see Ian McGregor and Hayden Christensen together again. There was also the right amount of Reva in the show. Enough to get her motivations, but not so much that she feels like a second protagonist. Okay, well, that is just about it. Um, if you liked the video, uh... Hope you do. If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. I, I like it's okay if you like. I'm not saying you can't dislike the show. It's okay if you dislike it. I'm just saying like your uh, the the these points are just nonsensical to me in the story. Like a lot of people agree as well. They're like you know, this man is kind of you know, not really seeing the bigger picture here. Yeah, uh, again, it's just, there's a lot more nuance. It's not really black and white. He's, I feel like he's just, he, he wants to see, like, big light show fight between them or whatever. I don't, I don't know what he wants, but it's, it's clearly not what's in the, like, reality formed by common sense and how these things work. I don't know, that's... I can't really find a way to explain it. It's just this... I don't I don't really agree with anything. He, he, well, I, I agree with some, but... I didn't really show, like, everything. Just the parts I wanted to talk about, but yeah. That's the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you do, like, subscribe... I want to I want to try to hit 200 by the end of this year. Uh I don't know, I'm trying to grow, I'm trying to get back into the game. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.